Um, we're going to discuss uh, the fact that there is no reason whatsoever after this next half hour to be unhappy, to question yourself, to be in pain, uh, to believe in the truth of any traumatic injury. There is a God. We're talking about the experience of people throughout the world. There are many, 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 many millions of them who are spiritual. They're complete within themselves because they're not part of the everyday world. They're spiritual because there is a God and because they are of contrite heart, I mean they're humble, they're genuine, they're real. So even in the great writings of the saints that we're aware of, you're not gonna find, you're gonna find that what, what would interest the public and no more, in other words, the reader, the inspiring, but what really goes on is of such a humane, spiritual, human again character. They do not want to hurt anyone, to uh, prohibit anyone from feeling, experiencing, believing in whatever they believe in. Last week we spoke of the fact that a spiritual person doesn't want to hurt anyone. In, in a little more deeply considered, it means that you're completely sensitive to all reality and you hide this. You're literally not here. You are before God in eternity and God is an infinite, humble human being himself. It's an infinite presence. And when you're quiet, you're humble, you're aware, it's, there's no pain, there's no trauma. All the ones you love, like for myself, the reason I do this is there are so many people I love so deeply and they're involved in, for the most part, they're involved in a tremendous agony in their lives for this reason or that reason. I don't have to explain that. We know what that means. This is a rough town. It's a low-rent neighborhood, this, this planet Earth. It's always been called the material dream or the mortal dream or the, or the way of all flesh and, and high literature and so forth. It's, uh, we're high rollers in, in a low-rent neighborhood making the point very clearly the spiritual people are even the saints we're we're all spiritual people don't want to hurt anyone to intrude i myself have many skills of being able to very quietly listen be with people and every spiritual person uses different spiritual gifts and there are an endless array of uh, spiritual enhancement techniques meditations exteriorize your consciousness you know, uh, and it's there, prayer, doesn't matter what it is. There is a God. We are his radiance. And continuing on that point, the reason the world does not know about us or understand us or believe in God is because we're, we don't want to hurt them. In other words, hurt whatever their reality is. We're completely aware, say a spiritual person runs and hey Johnny how you doing we're aware of every factor in their psyche in their emotional structure in their spirit that's not present they might be thinking oh you're you're a little bold and you're they might have these little tiny thoughts and we're respectful to them because we're always available to be an instrument of God for their benefit today I'm going to elaborate on that so we can understand that we don't have to take it anymore Okay? You can get very powerful, like my buddy Greg here, completely spiritual, he's, he's an altar boy, and yet he's a ninth degree martial artist. He trains many, many, many professional fighters, and, and he's the kindest, truest man in the world. He's just simply because he's made a living in fine arts and uh, musician and so forth and so on, but he is completely present. Every great artist is completely present in their own psyche before God, before this openness, before this purity. Divinity itself, the presence of God, which is, is what we touch when we don't want the world, when we stop needing or wanting or desiring. And that's not a difficult task. If you had, we'll say, a, a neuropsychologist, maybe she or he got, was, uh, had a stroke, and then because they're a scientist, they would look at, oh, it took me 70 seconds to have a certain th type of thought. 
and then it disappeared and yet and it, maybe a minute and a half to think through a certain other thing and yet as a scientist she knows that all the energy all the neural synapses and all are going off and 99.9% .9 of the, the presence of the energy of the thinking going on in your body subliminally is uh, not part of your conscious thinking process. We talked about the Zen master uh, Bodhidharma. If you, this is simply an organ of concentration or not of concentration, of, of, of the opposite. You're simply looking for something. It's, it's uh, one of your sensu senses. You want to touch, you feel. And the mind is just looking for something out of order. And Zen meditation or martial arts meditation, like my buddy Greg would do, is just you get your whole sensorial feel. You feel that just relaxed. In other words, that all your senses, all your emotions fall down deep in the abdomen. And it just takes a moment. It's very peaceful. And yet, this thing is going on in here and there, like a little rabbit. And you put this thing, you exteriorize, if that's a word, your consciousness. And in meditation, you put it 18 inches. If you were a Buddhist monk, uh, when I studied my buddies in Korea and so forth, you just look 18 inches on the floor, you put your mind out there, you exteriorize it. And all the thinking will stop. Last week I spoke about the fact you do it for 30, 35 minutes sometime. I mean, truly do it. We are out of, out of your thinking mind. Something will happen to you that is so enormous. You might already be illumined, might always be uh, spiritual, saintly, kind, true. But something will happen where you can feel all the glory of God in heaven. It's, it's so empowering. But you always, always, always hide this when you're around mortals. <laughs> Remember Shakespeare, what fools these mortals are being. So the idea is that we are so kind and contrite. We're not afraid of anything. We're being gentle and people might mistake that for a certain weakness or we're or even being feeble in some way. We're not. We're whole, we're intact, we're powerful. And we always hide it because we never want the world to think that we have some kind of power being spiritual. There are always uh, writings about the gifts and powers of spirituality. They're not involved with the present world system which the material environment we live in. They're not that. They're of a higher order. When you don't want, when you don't need, and you're quiet, then, then they count. You can go 2,000 years in the past, 5,000, you can see the dinosaurs. At the same time, you're, you're not even here. You're nobody. And that's why you can know God. I am nobody. I've always known that. Because of that, I can see God. I can see God in you. There's nothing wrong with you. Stop being battered about by this little flimsy force that owns this world. It's a, in all the spiritual traditions, the world is seen as a, an illusion. It's not really here. It's a fabrication, a construct. And the moment we fall in love, which is the same as enlightenment, but you fall in love with God. But there's no one need or desire. There's just an eternal like, oh my God. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you will always be the center of the universe. God is that infinite presence that gives God's self away forever. These are not just words. Stop believing in all the stuff that's coming at you. Apply two or three or seven of these self-enhancement or spiritual enhancement techniques, whatever it takes to quiet yourself, to remind yourself. And the number one thought of this session is that once we begin on this path, God, the actuality, that there is a God of this universe, and that this universe, all the pain, how could a God have ever created that? Any God, yet alone God, and this infinite radiance of eternity. 
there are no words. That presence, that God, from this moment forward is with you. It's just remembering, reminding yourself. So whatever you use to begin this process, and all of us here and all spiritual people in the world have felt enormous spiritual moments or days on end or just being in love, that's very similar. That's a little touch of that. That's a reminder of God touching each other. The reminder that there is something larger than just the person and the body and your paycheck. It's not about respect or being respected. It's about quiet. And once you step through the quiet, it's so wonderful to be you. To know you're clean and fresh and true and real and pure and whole and free and innocent. And you are a divine genius. You know everything. You feel everything. You see everything because you are everything. This little, little temporal journey into this material atmosphere, all of us are spiritual, dropped into this plane of beingness, gave up our part in divinity, literally all of us who are spiritual, and it doesn't matter to even discuss the rest of it. It's a, it's a bad dream. And you let go of the bad dream. Like the psychologist, kind of like, oh, I know it takes so many seconds for the conscious thoughts to move, but, under, but I know as a scientist, I just had a stroke. I'm becoming whole, and I, and I, but I know what's really going on is subliminal, and so I'm not going to react to these thoughts. I know in 70 more seconds, this conscious thought will leave and something else will happen. And in meditation, you'll know that every the thing's coming at you, okay. Become quiet, don't attach yourself to your conscious thinking. And the subliminal plane of divinity is always there. Except it's a hundred trillion, quadrillion, septillion, that's 300 zeros. 602 zeros in the metric system. Septillion, did I say whatever? It's, it's, it's so wonderful, the real you. You are so wonderful to have given up your part in divinity to allow yourself to be this, this body in this place at this time. Your mother knows the cost, and I hope you respond worshipfully to your mother for that kind of love. For that's the love that God has for us, that we have for those we love. It's a transcendent supernatural love. Most of all, it's your kind of love. Isn't it yours? You're children of a new dawn. You're adults of the true heaven. You're here to take charge to roll it all up like my buddy Tim would do. He's the nicest, kindest man in the world and you'll never know it because he lives in the rough part of life and it's like a, uh, a priest. Someone like a detective would laugh at a pro. Though. How would a priest know what's going on in, on the streets here? Well, I don't know. I guess if you've ever been in the confessional box, you might rethink that. So the job of spiritual people, first of all, is to battle evil. It's like Rocky in the, uh, in the sixth round with Apollo, was it, whoever, whatever his name was. And he's fighting him and, and then he allows him to take all the punches and then he comes out of the corner and saying, you ain't so bad, you know, it was like, you know, he took all he could, all it was the other guy could give. And, so when you're very quiet, you don't have to even do that with Satan. It's an actual force that runs the world. People are possessed. Uh, I've certainly been involved with what you call depossessions and so forth. And it's, it's, it's nothing for me because I don't react whatsoever. So it's not fighting some force like it's an equal force when you're spiritual, when you're contrite before our Father. It's, it's easy. There's nothing to it. Yes, we're going to practice for a few months or a year.
more than anything, there'll be no more months or years when we finish our appointed time. There'll be time no longer. The mystery of God will be finished. The mystery is there's nothing wrong with you. You allow this full blossoming infinite soul that you are to pour itself down into this one little space to be just like everyone else. I mean, if that's not humility, if you are not humble, then the saints are not part of God. You're humble. You gave up your part in divinity to be here at a certain time and place. You've allowed the world to eat your fine senses. And now you remember why you're here. And the reason you're here is God cannot experience the world. I know this is a fact, it's a spiritual presence. It's the beginning of what God is infinitely beyond what anyone's ever thought. There is a spiritual condition called illumination. It's true faith. It's spiritual, it's religious, it's holy. And yet it's natural as an early morning breeze. Brother Tim knows it. Sister Rachel knows it. Everyone here is aware of God in different ways. This morning we're simply saying that walk away from it entirely, respect who you are and what you've done. You have to respect it without respecting. I am special, it's respect is very quiet. Humble is very quiet. It's like people, the average person, well, I'm not gonna be spiritual if they give something up, you know, if they give up love or whatever, like. No, you don't give anything up. You become infinitely, though secretly, humble, yes, but powerful beyond words or deeds or thoughts or imaginings. You can see the entirety of the universe. It's a much bigger picture than anyone's ever dreamt. The visionaries have seen it. The great artists and thinkers and literate beings have sensed this this knowing this, this truth beyond the edges of perception. And we know God's there and we're quiet and all the edges of perception fall away, humbly. He's there, you're there, you're him. You're his eyes and ears and senses in this world because it first of all is an illusion, it's not really here but as horrible as it seems, and it is because of the devil's workings in the world, it's like they're stepping on our toes, but we're infinite giants, and, but it hurts every time they step. But we're here to protect all of the innocent, not some. I spent too much time around the world and, uh, aware of things that should never have been. So you might be able to have a, a decent dinner tonight. I will if I want to or whatever, or, or not. Most of the people in the world are hungry. They're treated savagely by the local operators or owners of this or that or the other. It's a bad, bad place. It, it doesn't have to be. You have the different socio-political groups that are fighting each other, there's nothing except God, there's never been anything except God, except this higher consciousness, except you. The point is we're humble because we've been respecting other people's belief system. They believe I'm Johnny or it's Joe and I'm here and I'm this person or I have an education or I have money or I'm cute or whatever, it's like, so we're around people and they look at us like we're idiots, but what I'm saying is there's a way beyond all that, you can become stronger than all that and they'll fold up. It's like, come on, you ain't so bad. I mean, Satan, it's, they say that uh, the devil fears one righteous person more than a thousand blind believers. And righteousness is not a stand, that let's fight, it's humility before God. That's the only power a human being can ever enjoy. 
But once you're there, God keeps giving God's self to you. You have gifts and abilities and thrills. You're aware of unending dimensions and different rooms of understanding and wisdom. But it's all here. I can see my, my family, my this, my that, the people in my life that I love so dearly and I couldn't help at the time because of circumstances. And, and I can meet them here and now. My point is we will help all those we love completely and truly and finally and forever. But of all the issues of mankind, the one that can only be done by the individual on them, by themselves is their relationship to God. You're the church, you're the synagogue. You're the reason, you're the truth. And you get there through humility. That's the only candle you need to light. And then God will be there. And you'll be as he is. And the walls and windows of sacrament will be made of morning light. And it can never dim. You are the morning light at the end of a world. There are many worlds, but only this one. I don't know how to say it except it's infinite stupidity. All of it. Remember Shakespeare said all the world's a stage. In other words, all the arch archetypal images. I'm the, I'm the baker, I'm, I'm the mayor. I'm, it's like there are no those positions that Jung called the archetypes, you know. The, none of that. Nobody has, there's no government but God. There's no truth but God. There's no thought but God. And God is this infinite ethereal purity and beauty. God is you your deepest heart's stirrings. There is no other God. God doesn't want us to do anything or make a stand in the world about anything. Just step away from the world. It's so easy. It's so necessary. More than any of this, it's so you. Isn't it you? Do you really think God left us here to prove something or to? No. We came here, we gave up all that dignity and purity and decency and truth and infinite ecstasy. Yes, it's infinitely. Ecstasy is a word for it, but it's more than that and infinite is a word because it's more than that and there's no other human word every atom of your being every electron is another universe these are not just words if a simple little most average person from philadelphia boy can feel can know all this as a child and now then everyone can i don't say that out of any out of it i know i'm very average but because i'm quiet and let god do everything the right thing gets done The world's a very bad place for most people here. We're going to instruct, teach, care, pray, heal, caress with more love than we've ever known. And mostly in a very, very quiet, secretive way. Because it's all spiritual. Because in the end of this process, it's all spiritual. It's as though it never was. Because in all truth, it never was. So as Father Tim would say, you put on the whole armament of God. He's the most powerful street warrior I know, and he's the kindest man. It's, it's, 
I won't say any more about it, but his, his life is, is the church. And all of us here, our life is, uh, we're not happy. We're fulfilled, we're aware, we're true, we're kind, we're decent, we're powerful, we're erudite, we're contrite, we're all that, but we're not happy because of what I said in the beginning of the message. We allow everyone to be who they are, not because they're stronger, because we're kind. I use my gifts when I'm alone with people and then I'll turn this thing on and I'll become and God himself will speak through me and make people well because they'll know and they'll feel it's from God and know there, there's nothing wrong with them. It's the conditions of the world make us think we're, we're less than, maybe a brother beats us or whatever, anything. It could be anything in the world. And we learn to let that go. We step back with Father God quietly then everything gets healed and you can't explain it. It happens differently every moment. I'm just going to throw different personal examples in here because I think it helps the message. I mean, I've never picked up a book and I've read thousands, I guess, uh, without opening to the right, the right words, the right time. I drive down the street, the street sign says something, a car beeps a horn, uh, anything else. Like I talk about the subliminal nature of thinking and like with you were a psychologist, you, you're aware that under the subconscious and then there's the super conscious and the spiritual conscious. You, every little aspect, every little atom of your conscious awareness, you will understand it after a few short months of detailed, deep meditation of knowing what was said earlier, God will be with us. And you'll see everything, you'll know everything. Everything will come to remembrance. You'll be instantly outside of time because there is no such no such burden in captivity it doesn't exist dr einstein proved that because he was a great mystic and he he had to prove that there was that there's time didn't exist <laughs> and he did that but and we don't have to hang on a cross that's been done you don't have to pay any due you just have to realize who you are. You are God's presence in a very darkened time, in a completely dark atmosphere. The world does not exist. All the mystics were right. The first moment of spiritual consciousness, illumination, cosmic consciousness, enlightenment, illumination. In this scripture, they call it salvation, being saved, meant being illumined saved from your a lower consciousness that's what it means hear o israel the lord god is one and that was very very profound in this world there's only one god and deeply involved and interspersed through that is the sense of divine providence that good will out try to imagine how deep that is people have tried to create a nation on that thought They get a sense of it and they want to do something in the world with it. No. Get a sense of it and individually let go of the world's hold on you. I wrote a couple of books, After Time and Island of Hearts. Please read them. I, I meant them for this type of a class. This is just a general empowerment class. But the individual studies all work. The idea of people, how to listen to people, how to heal, how to do anything and everything in a spiritual way. I got that down on paper somewhat, well, very fully. And then please understand what's being said. These are not dreams or wishes or hopes. There is a God. There's nothing wrong with you. You're born to end the whole thing and it ends in your psyche. That's what illumination, nirvana, spirituality truly is in this environment, in this world system. You're gonna blow through the whole thing. It's not just that you feel some beautiful feeling some evening and you get up early in the morning with the first ray of the sun, and the dawn and the innocence in the air and the soft golden haze and you're 
you know that everything's beautiful and then all of a sudden five seconds later you hear a truck slam its door and then the world becomes the world in illumination the world will never become the world again you're the new sheriff in town I really really mean that You are empowered from on high. You are a holy messenger, a holy instrument, a healer, a teacher, a saint. There are so many gifts of the soul, of the spirit within you. Step away from the world formed to God, unformed, uncreated. God is uncreated, everything is spiritual. And so as, you, as, soon, as soon as you step away from what seems to be, it's such a joy and yet it's natural. I can go hang out with, with Rob or, or Greg or Tim or anybody here and it's all wonderful. I have my own CEO here, it's wonderful. We have a friend here, who, who, Ingrid, who can do anything. She walks in any room, in any business, anything, no matter what it is, she's the CEO. And I mean that in the highest, purest, classiest sense imaginable. So all of us have different ways of being. Tim's so humble, it's ridiculous, and he's the tough guy in town. He is the new sheriff in town, and he's always been in town. The point is, you can live out your soul's destiny. This time around. It ends for all of us. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks or believes or says or considers or some thought or vision they had. I put it down in those two little books, study them at, at will and, and understand that it's all covered. There's nothing unknown and everyone in the world has an opinion and all those opinions are wrong. Not a little bit off but infinitely wrong. The world never was. You are an infinite soul that gave that up to be in an infinite universe in this one like tiny infinitesimal infinitely smaller than that atom of a place of, of a little particle of dust. I say this in the terms of cosmic consciousness, illumination, when you feel these things, it's infinitely wonderful. And then the first, before the first moment of it, this whole physical world disappears like a bad dream, like it never was. And it will never be again in your day-to-day -day consciousness. You'll know everything, you'll see everything, you'll feel everything, you'll be everything. And you can heal everyone that's decent, that you want to, in your way, in your time. You can go home and work on them, or you can meet them at the market, or I can look in someone's eyes and do that. I'm, excuse me, I'm just move to do that. It just is. There are beautiful, beautiful, dignified souls. And the world doesn't respect their class, their dignity, their intelligence, their sensibilities. And the world in all like literature has been called the way of all flesh, the mortal dream. And it's just it's Satan's casino. And it need not be in your psyche. And when you step away from the world form, Quietly, simply, purely. Your breathing will become more full and rhythmic and it will disappear. There's something beyond this agency of breathing, this consciousness. There's something so wonderful. It's a person. It's you. You gave that up to be here because something was needed. You felt it in your divine beingness. And now you're here and you're going to use all the time and all the pain and all the trauma, all the conditioning of being here to understand what it's all about. Through that, you can communicate to other people. I lived on the mountains in Tibet 50 years ago and I realized I'm the only one that could communicate this. And at the time, I only saw myself as the only one who fought the dark side completely. And so. I used, because I had the state already, I was not trying to achieve, it was like, so I went, 
into the worst places there are to, and been involved with the worst stuff there is for all this time to find out ways to communicate the teaching. You are the teaching, what you feel in your heart and soul. And every moment, every egregious moment beyond that is the dark side trying to entrap you in some way, to ensnare you. In the old book, they call it the snare of the devil. And all these subtle, subtle things. Please worship him. He worships you. If you can contain that in your heart. You'll know him the only God. You're a bright and a shining star. You've given up your part in divinity. You've placed yourself here in hell. This is a hell. You have a bad dream and you wake up and you're completely happy, but the dream was real, wasn't it? Again, any spiritual presence, they're, they're, they're always going to be so nice because they don't want to change your reality. The, the basic message of today is you can step beyond that I can talk to anyone and be very, very direct if I choose and change them, if they can be changed in a public setting or whatever. I've hidden that part of me for 50 years. I don't wish to do it any longer. Do you? Spend some quiet time. And in those hours, your quiet times, you'll see him. You'll know him. And the rest will be as it was. Nothing. Wake you that dream this dream and dream no longer. Thank you. I love you. Thank you for listening. Thank you.